The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, has urged Nigerians to report cases of rape within their vicinity to the agency or the nearest police station. Mrs. Julie Oka Donley, Director General of the agency, made the call in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria on Thursday in Abuja following the rising cases of rape across the country. According to her, reporting the case of rape is the only way the trend can be stopped in the society and that the agency will not compromise its work for anything if such cases reported to it. The DG said that sex offender register had already been opened in the agency where the names of rape perpetrators were documented for further actions and that both old and present cases should be reported to the agency. Joining us now is the DG of NAPTIV, Julie Oka Donley. She joins us via Skype to share more light on this. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, Rape cases are mostly underreported as, uh, as um, is in circulation. Why is it? And what has your finding been like uh, as to the probable causes of this? Um, the, the causes of rape cases uh, Cultural practice um, where families have refused to report cases and cases of rape due to um, perceived stigmatization. Uh, but the question we ask is who's, who is to be stigmatized? Is it the victim of rape or the perpetrator of rape? I mean, so we need to change the mindset of all of us, you know, to think that it is the fault of the victim that is raped, and so it's a shame to reports that someone was raped. So in this case, we need parents, we need uh, faith-based organizations, we need community leaders, the media, to work with us on this. You know, we need to change the mindset of, 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 of everyone to know that not reporting cases of rape is like giving a license to rapists to operate unhindered. And so we need to change this uh, 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 mindset. Let me ask you about the decision to uh, list the names of these people and publish it. I mean, um, confirmed rapists, those who perpetrate this crime. Um, what will be the end result that would benefit uh, would-be victims and survivors as well? Yeah, you know, a lot of people would not want their names to be published. They don't want to be named and shamed. Because the case of rape is something that is usually done, you know, in, in, in hidden circumstances. And so if you put out the name of the sex offender right there in people's faces, you put his picture, you put everything about him. I mean, it will be very difficult for other people to even contemplate raping anyone at all. And for the victims, it gives them a sense of justice, knowing that, yes, something is being done as against, you know, reporting and then nothing seems to be done. Most of the time we have very long trials and it discourages some of these victims. Some of them get married in the process and they say, hey, I can't go out and, 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 and you know, to t go out and to court proceedings and married. I don't even want my husband to know. I don't want anyone to know. You know, so it's quite frustrating. But, you know, if, if we're able to have cuts, you know, that can, ex uh, special cuts that can expedite these cases, expedite cases like this, I'm sure a lot of people will come out to report. People are becoming more aware now. And, and so we still have them still coming to report cases of rape on, on practically a daily basis now. Uh, some would say it's not enough to ask victims to come out and speak up. What machineries are in place that you are aware of to ensure that perpetrators are punished sufficiently? Because the reason people are still agitating and complaining is because it seems like the, the level of crime is higher than those who get punished for it. Well, I wouldn't say the level of crime is higher. I want to say the level of reporting now is higher. People are becoming more aware. And of course, we know that sentencing is between 12 years to life. But then, if, like I said, we have special cost cuts, which I think we have a few, but we have more special cuts, you know, that, you know, expedite cases like this of rape, like this, and, you know, trials are very short and concluded, I think it would work. It would go a very long way. The case of UWA is already one too many. By way of legislature, uh, legislation, rather, what should be done immediately? 
Well, I think that the, 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 the sentencing is not bad because, I mean, you have life imprisonment, we have from 12 to life, which is not bad. But the problem here is the long trials. You know, I think we have enough legislation. Secondly, if all states can domesticate the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, it will be very important, as well as the Child Rights Act. But in the case that they do not want to domesticate it, they can also strengthen the various legislations that are already existing. There are legislations. There are so many legislations. The problem is implementation. You know, so we need to learn to implement it and, of course, to re strategize. The protesting that's been going on across um, the states now and on social media, uh, specifically with the case of Ua, and um, a recent one again we've heard is in Ibado. We have the case in Jigawa. What's your take on the importance of protesting and should it be sustained? Because we do have a tendency to slide back when the urgency of the moment has diminished. Well, sometimes it is natural that, you know, when the urgency is diminished, um, we slide back, especially if the protest is not taken to the right quarters. I believe that the governors in these various states have, you know, taken it into account and they are going to do something about it. NAPTIP is also going to follow up aggressively and also do something about it. We are an interested party and we're hoping that the perpetrators will be brought to book and we will be holding a watching brief. We're not going to be quiet about it. We're going to work with the state governments and the, uh, and the, the relevant um, law enforcement agencies who are handling this case. And I, I, I believe that the protest is a sounded, you know, a kind of message that um, Nigerians are no longer sitting down and allowing perpetrators to just you know, get away with murder, and then um, something is going to be done. Uh, this is not a trick question. It's actually something that we know. Our, our agitating and talking about issues like this has been with us. Let's go back to 2019. We have the House of Representatives say that they are going to investigate and come up with some resolution when some blind students uh, were allegedly raped at their school um, somewhere in Abuja. Nothing was heard of that afterwards. We don't have an update the way the case was reported. Now we have another case of the National Assembly saying that they are going to, um, you know, encourage more punitive measures. When do you think it would be the right time for us to move away from this blanket condemnation that is impassioned at the time to concrete action by our legislat uh, legislatures uh, particularly? I think the right person to answer this question would be the Speaker of the House of Representatives. For me, on my own part, I will ensure that I follow up cases like this. The case of the blind student is being handled by the Nigerian police force. So we will just ensure that we follow up on cases like this that are, have our interest to us to ensure that justice is done.